Today marks the second day of Iraq's airspace closure. The move came into effect to thwart predictable terror attacks and collateral, according to the country's Civil Aviation Authority. The aviation regulator warned of potential risks to passenger safety at a time when Russia escalates its airstrike campaign in support of Syrian president, but not without using the skies of Iraq as its air corridor. Both domestic and international flights have been brought to a halt until Thursday, but as Russia continues to fire missiles, the ban may drag out longer than expected. Topolov aircrafts are among those passing through Iraq, which are known to fire at their targets from mid-air before returning back to their bases. These vehicles have been sighted in close proximity to Erbil International, uncomfortably close, as the airport spokesman described. The fear Iraq has acted upon is the possibility of more civilian casualties as its airspace remains densely trafficked. It is a risk that its aviation authority wishes to prevent. Like most victories Iraq has recently witnessed, the liberation of Sinjar was also not without its costs. <laughs> Piles of rubble where rows of houses stood now obstruct the streets of the devastated city. Even those able to return may feel like strangers in a town that no longer resembles home. The latest controversy, however, since liberation was announced 10 days ago of fresh attacks targeting Arab residents of an area the Islamic State overran in August last year. Peshmerga fighters confirmed that the entire area had been finely combed and purged of militants, but denied any acts of revenge had taken place. In the last year, Sinjar's Azidi community has suffered countless atrocities at the hands of IS. Their people were kidnapped, their women sexually enslaved, and their elderly left to die. As the remains of the dead continue to surface in newly discovered mass graves, the past is increasingly difficult to forget. Many believe these grievances have fueled new cycles of ethnic-based violence against Arabs whose property has been looted and whose homes have been destroyed, as confirmed by eyewitness accounts. Pickup trucks carrying away looted belongings from the homes of Sunni Iraqis were also reported by local and international news sources. Victims accuse armed Dazidi gangs of trying to purge the area of Arabs to permanently alter the North's demographic map. The Peshmerga accuse Arab Sunnis of aiding IS, but they tell a different story, arguing that those who fought with the group long fled the area to avoid coalition airstrikes. Raging battles in the mountainous north have eclipsed the history of cultural coexistence between the two groups, now pitted against one another.